starts right now. Pfizer taking another step forward in the process of getting its vaccine to kids. With only a few more hurdles to go, parents have questions. We speak with pediatrician to answer some questions coming up. And molten lava left spewing in a chain of Spanish islands. While it may sound far away, there is a deeper connection to San Antonio and now a need for donations. That effort coming up, but first. Our top story tonight, San Antonio police hoping new video can help in their murder investigation. 40 year old Christopher Olivares found dead nearly two weeks ago and still no arrest. And tonight we're also hearing from a neighbor who walked out of his front door to find a victim collapsed at his doorsteps. The night team's John Paul Parajas with the latest in this case. San Antonio police working a new lead in the murder of 40 year old Christopher Olivares. Officers want to speak with this man. Investigators calling him a person of interest. Surveillance video shows him walking out of Olivares' home on Kirk Place. Olivares was found near a neighbor's front porch steps, beaten and stabbed on the morning of September 25th. When you wake up in the morning and you see a deceased person in your front yard, you're, you right away like, oh my God. And then knowing that he's your neighbor, oh my God. We're hiding this man's identity for his safety. He explains Olivares stumbled to his home looking for help before collapsing and dying. Fire department came in, you know how they do with the blood, they, they bleached it all. Never making it to the door. Just felt so bad that, you know, he came to my aid and I couldn't help him. He was so uh, bloody, beat, bruised, swollen, uh, purple. I couldn't identify him. He soon realized it was Olivares, a neighbor he considers family, often bringing each other plates of food from cookouts, describing him as a good man who was there for him willing to help when his own son was losing his battle against COVID, eventually passing the day before Olivares. My son died of COVID and we were there through the process and we knew he was going, we knew he was dying. But Chris, I mean, being murdered brutally like that, you know, man, it's just, it's scary. It's like my wife said, it's like losing another son. And police believe whoever is responsible for Olivares' death stole his car. That car has been found, but they haven't said if they found any evidence inside. And if you want a closer look at that surveillance video, you can check that out at KSAT.com. At police headquarters, John Paul Barajas, KSAT. Procedures quickly resuming in at least six abortion clinics in Texas. This just a day after a federal judge put Texas's abortion law on hold. The law banned abortions after six weeks into pregnancy. A federal judge blocked the measure in a ruling last night. Soon after, Amy Miller, the founder of Whole Woman's Health, says their clinics were working to help women. We have reopened um, our schedule to, to expand beyond that six week limit in our Texas clinics already. In fact, last night, um, we reached out to some of the patients that we had on a waiting list. Whole Woman's Health operates four clinics in North, Central and South Texas. Planned Parenthood has not said whether they will resume operations. There are some critics to the overnight ruling. We're deeply saddened by the action of that judge. He is blocking a law which is protecting unborn babies from abortion. Joe Poshman with Texas Alliance for Life, a pro-life organization, is waiting to see what happens next in the legal fight. Texas has already filed an appeal. Right now, police looking for this 12-year-old boy, Lestat Jordan Hernandez Covarrubias, was last seen Saturday near an apartment complex on Lock Street that's on the east side near I-35 and North Walters. Lestat was last seen wearing a red graphic tee, blue jeans, and white high tops. If you have any information on his whereabouts, you're asked to call 210-207-7660. A little girl seen flying as a car plowed into her bedroom. Police say the driver is suspected of drinking before getting behind the wheel. This all happening overnight on the city's northeast side on Window. Carlos Duran and his family live at the home a, a car crashed into. He says he didn't know what happened until police rushed to the scene and woke him up. Meanwhile, officers confronted 49-year-old Charles Slaughter. They say he tried to run from the crash but didn't make it very far. Another driver who happened to be a nurse was able to stop 
and help Duran's three-year-old daughter. That was an angel. Uh, that's, that's all I have to say, and I, I'm very thankful uh, for her. And despite the impact, Duran says the child suffered only minor injuries, and he's very grateful tonight that all his children are safe. Turning now to the pandemic, more than a dozen new COVID-related deaths now confirmed in Bear County. Metro Health reporting 17 new COVID deaths. We have seen about 400 cases a day on average in the past week, and hospitalizations have finally fallen to fewer than 500 COVID-19 patients. 82% of patients are not vaccinated. It's the vaccine that health officials say and city leaders say also that it's our way out of the pandemic. We've got the virus in the position to issue a knockout punch. Let's work on that together, get people who are eligible to be vaccinated to get their vaccine now. A $100 HEB gift card is still being offered as an incentive at Metro Health Vaccine Clinics as after you get your one dose Johnson & Johnson or both initial doses of Moderna and the Pfizer vaccine. Along with the first and second doses of the vaccine, Metro Health is also tracking those who get the booster shot Right now, only Pfizer's booster is fully approved, and so far nearly 60,000 people have gotten that third dose. The Pfizer vaccine could soon be ready for children five years and up by Thanksgiving. Today, the company formally applying for emergency use authorization. The Food and Drug Administration has scheduled time to review the Pfizer data October 26. That would be followed by an approval by the CDC. Local pediatricians tell us parents have a lot of questions. Nurse and mother to toddlers Meredith Fain doesn't want to take a chance with COVID. I've seen firsthand what COVID can do on, on patients and um, what happens when um, patients aren't vaccinated. With most of her concerns and questions answered by the family pediatrician, she'll be rolling up her five-year-old's sleep in a few weeks. We're looking for that FDA approval. I have an 11-year-old daughter who is very excited about getting the vaccine. University Health pediatrician Robert Sanders says he's confident in the data so far and hopes to ease parents' minds about the safety of the vaccine. We really want all children vaccinated, but the children with underlying health conditions like asthma, like diabetes, heart conditions, immune suppression, these are all children who really, really need to get the vaccine as soon as it's authorized. He says the side effects are similar to those seen in adults. Pain at the injection site, tiredness, and feeling unwell, which lasts one to two days. The vaccine would likely be given as two separate shots. The dosing would be smaller, one third of the amount adults get. COVID appears to have a less severe impact on children, but that's not true for all. The American Academy of Pediatrics reports at least 520 kids have died in the U.S. so far. In Bear County, 20 out of the nearly 500 hospitalizations are children. They can get actually very sick to the point where they're really uncomfortable um, and and really just kind of having a, a um, just really having a challenging time at home. Metro Health says they'll talk to local pediatricians to help protect kids once the vaccine is authorized. We're really going to be looking for pediatricians who already do this all the time to step up and hopefully be one of the, the major providers. And off camera, there were some parents who said they were not ready to commit just yet. But two things Dr. Sanders wants to mention. Children who already had COVID would still be eligible for a vaccine. And doctors say the COVID-19 vaccine can be given along with other routine vaccines. As always, talk to your pediatrician about it. We expect to hear more about the approval in the coming weeks. And Patty, a Spurs sports and entertainment led project securing up to 17 million more dollars in public backing today from the San Antonio City Council. That money meant to help create the human performance campus, campus near La Cantera and Six Flags. Plans for the campus include a new practice facility for the Spurs, a 22 acre office park, office space and an open source research institute focused on improving various types of human performance. City Council approved tax rebates for most of the project. The city is requiring nearly a quarter billion dollars in improvements outside of the park area and the creation of at least 15 new jobs that pay more than $50,000 a year. Recent changes in the ownership of the Spurs led to questions about the franchise's future in Alamo City, but council members avoided tying those concerns to the incentives in today's discussion. 
that does not calculate into um, the uh, the decision that I made today to support this and you know to support this throughout the process. Bear County is also committed to providing $15 million worth of assistance toward the project, which is expected to cost more than half a billion dollars in all. And still ahead on a night beat, molten images of molten lava coming in from across the globe, but their impact being felt much closer to home here in San Antonio. That story coming up. Plus, we take a look at a new app created for the Japanese tea garden right here in San Antonio. What users can expect to experience when they download it on their phones coming up. But first, a three-year-old boy missing in Texas, the mother sharing her emotional story as crews comb through acres of land. The search next on the night beat. A desperate search tonight for a missing three-year-old boy east of College Station. The Grimes County Sheriff's Office helping in this search. ATVs, horses, heat sensors, dive teams, and even specialty canines from the Department of Corrections being used in the effort. Araceli Nunez is the boy's mother. She says her son was playing in the yard before he disappeared. Cuando ella dice eso, yo corro lo más fuerte que yo pude, yo grité su nombre. A neighbor told her that she had saw her son chasing their dog down the road. So when she got that information, she took off running the direction that the neighbor had told her that the dog went. Definitely feel for that mother. She says her son never leaves their property and is concerned someone may be hiding him from her. Lava continues to flow, destroying homes and impacting businesses on the Spanish Canary Island of La Palma. It may seem a long ways away, but the area holds a special connection to San Antonio. It's why a local nonprofit is hoping you can help those who are in need tonight. A small group of pioneers traveled from the Canary Islands before landing in Mexico and traveling up to what we now know today as San Antonio. And that was in 1731, soon after a town began to form and the birth of San Antonio began. It's why the Canary Islands Descendants Association here in San Antonio is hoping you can help those left struggling as they deal with a volcano that began erupting on September 19th. There are so many family members in San Antonio that have deep ties to their ancestors. That's why we think it is so important that we contribute whatever we can and help our fellow cousins, uncles, aunts, uh, grandfathers, great grandfathers uh, that are still living in La Palma. The association is collecting monetary donations and they say 100% of those donations will be used to help those in La Palma. If you want to join the campaign, we have that information on KSAT.com. And it didn't take long. Potential candidates are looking to become Bear County judge once Nelson Wolf wraps up his final term. San Antonio State Representative Ina Minjares is considering a bid for the position. Minjares has represented House District 124 since 2015. The district includes parts of the west side and far west side. Prior to that, she served as a prosecutor in the Bear County DA's office. She's now looking for feedback before making an official run for the county seat. Judge Wolf's term will end next year. And a new addition to the Japanese tea garden here in San Antonio. A new app now launched to give viewers an augmented reality experience. Users can take a, a selfie with a virtual dragon, interact with koi fish, and learn about the history of this area. We wanted to be able to tell the story without putting a bunch of signage in the garden in this place of serenity and harmony. We wanted to, yet we wanted people to know that this is a place of diversity and harmony and serenity and a place of growth. And this app has been in the works for the last year and a half. You can find the app in the Apple Store or Google Play, the Japanese Tea Garden AR experience. And Samuel has not been there, Adam, and he needs to go. It's Great weather for that. It's, it is, and yeah. it's okay. He's still fairly new to this city. Been here long <laughs> enough, but you'll get there. You know, sometimes when you live somewhere, you don't take advantage of the things that all the right. tourists do and all that stuff, mm -hmm. but uh, that's something the locals definitely do. Okay, take a look at our weather headlines here. Above average afternoon temperatures, the high humidity, it's going to be back. And then we have a few rain chances ahead, but I do want to point out, 
in regard to the afternoon temperatures that lasts through the weekend and early next week. We could actually see a more significant drop off in temperatures in the middle of next week. Right now we're not convinced of it, but that potential does exist. All right, let's get a look at our satellite and radar. Our overall weather pattern. We need to talk about some rain chances. We could use the rain around here. It was another quiet day, high and dry across the Lone Star State, and we still have energy book ending us, flanking us. I mean, over the Great Lakes region, stretching all the way down to the southeast, that wound up system still dumping some areas of rain. Also over the Rocky Mountains, especially the northern Rockies, but it's good. They really need the moisture out west. What we have settling in, though, is an upper level high, not a big blue H, just a medium blue H that's going to be settling in for the weekend. So that's going to keep us high and dry. But I also want to point out all of this cloud cover over the Pacific, this plume of moisture is rounding the top of that ridge and the winds should steer some of that moisture our way, which really would just translate to some clouds tomorrow afternoon. Some of those high thin clouds that I love, those cirrus clouds like brush strokes in the sky, they make for great sunsets. And tomorrow evening, I think some of us could get in on one of those colorful sunsets due to those uh, cirrus clouds in the afternoon and early evening. Otherwise, no rain chances through the weekend. The next system will be headed into the four corner states that dip in the flow. The next disturbance that'll be over the weekend. And then by early Monday, it's going to throw a weak little surface boundary and a little bit of energy our way. Most of the rain is going to be north of us. We're talking Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, but we'll be on the tail end of it. I know as we often are and we could squeeze out just a few showers. We could use the rain. I mean, we're still in good shape drought wise. This is the newest drought monitor, of course, updated every Thursday. 8% of Texas considered in drought right now. I know that's not bad, but we're heading in the wrong direction. That's the problem. We're starting to see these yellow areas, the abnormally dry conditions spread. So we'll take all the moisture we can get. I do want to point out our neighbors in New Mexico and then into Arizona have seen some big improvements in their drought conditions. I mean, we can relate, so it's good to at least see somebody improving. Locally, we especially south of town, we have some abnormally dry areas and a little bit of drought starting to kick in around Eagle Pass and then near Catula in northwestern Frio County. As for our rain chances, nothing through the weekend, 20% Monday, then a 30% chance on Wednesday. What's promising about Wednesday, I know it's only a 30% chance right now, but at least there's the possibility we could be raising that rain chance in the days ahead. So that's something to watch. 66 this morning, near 90, then the high temperature, officially 89. Currently at 76, dew point is 60. So not necessarily into the humid category locally, but we're seeing the dew points start to rise at night, giving us a bit of mugginess. The afternoons are okay, not too humid. With dew points, upper 50s, near 60, but that all changes by Sunday. You'll wake up and feel that humidity thick humidity right away Sunday morning. So tomorrow we'll start the day in the low to mid 60s. I think 65 San Antonio, lower 60s outside of town. 91 for the high, a lot of sunshine, but some of those nice high thin clouds by the afternoon and evening. So some of us could squeeze it a nice and colorful sunset tomorrow evening. Then those slight rain chances early Monday. Then again on Wednesday. Currently we've got us in the mid to upper 80s Wednesday, Thursday. There's the potential we could be dropping those numbers. So that's something else to watch. And I had work to do on my yard this weekend, but with the humidity, I think I'll just wait. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. But no waiting to find out what happened to uh, this big battle in the gridiron. Tonight. Yeah, tonight we're talking about Taft and Brennan. They both came into this game unbeaten. A lot of the kids are calling this the district championship game. And eventually, I think that you're they're right. It's going to lead to that. When we come back, who finished on top, Brennan or Taft? We will show you in the Astros take game one of the ALDS coming up. It is a showdown we have been waiting for. The undefeated Taft Raiders ranked 6 and 12 top 12 against the unbeaten Brennan Bears, who are ranked number one. Taft establishing the ground game early. Quarterback Justice Hurd running the option. Sees a lane, decides to keep it. Slips by one, two, three, four, five defenders off to the races. Check this out. Lowers his shoulder, runs into another defender, and shoves him out of the way for the 72-yard touchdown. 7-0 Taft. The Bears bite back. Running back Jason Love breaks through the line. It looks like he could go all the way, but he gets pushed out of bounds, but not before he picks up. 47 big yards. The Bears would cap off that drive with a goal line touchdown to tie the game at 7 all. 42-28. Brennan is the final. The Bears stay undefeated and number one. It means a lot. Coming in the week, we knew it was going to be a good game, so we, we like tried to game plan good and like 
practice good every like every day and just come out and just ball out. To have being five and zero, us being five and zero, the battle unbeaten. You know, it just took a lot out of us, and it really, it really means a lot. You know, like I said, for playoff implications and just you know for that reputation. All right, staying in that same district, we visit a packed house at Ferris Stadium to see the battle between the O'Connor Panthers and the Warren Warriors. Second quarter, the Panthers are up by seven. They want more quarterback Aiden Lara. Play action pass to Jeremiah Hall. Hauls it in on the 46-yard bomb for the touchdown. Panthers go up 21-7. to The final from Ferris, 35-14. O'Connor, Brack fans showing their support as we welcome us to the SAISD Sports Complex with the Vokes and the Eagles. Second quarter, Eagles with the ball down by one. They go to the air. Adam Alvarado doing his best Trayvon Diggs impersonation. Here picks off the pass takes it the other way the Vokes offense does the rest on fourth and goal quarterback Xavier Tejas goes over the pile for the score 14 to 6 Lanier the final Lanier gets it 21 14 they call it the IB Bowl since both the Burbank Bulldogs and the Jefferson Mustangs are IB schools and tonight they're playing for the IB trophy first quarter Jefferson in Burbank territory going to the air looking to make a big play but it's Burbank that makes a big play here Bulldog Carlos Aguirre swoops in for the interception that would lead to this quarterback Andrew Buteo Takes a snap, runs right up the middle for the six-yard score, 7-0 Burbank. The final from Alamo Stadium, 20 to nothing. Bulldogs. The Judson Rockets looking for their first district win tonight. After starting their season one and four, this is Adesil Matatio. Right up the middle to make it 14 to nothing over South Sands. Second quarter, quarterback Jaden Castillo fires up the middle to Andre Jones. He just outruns the defense on his way to 54-yard touchdown. 20 to nothing, Judson a halftime. The final for Converse is a 37 to nothing victory for the Rockets. Jalen Smith's message to his teammates. Next. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Less than 24 hours after the Cowboys cut linebacker Jalen Smith. He is now a member of the Green Bay Packers. Smith agreed to a one-year contract with the Cowboys, still owing the pro pole linebacker from 2019 $7.2 million this season. Rising star Michael Parsons, one of the reasons why the Cowboys were able to make that decision to cut Smith that will save them over $9 million against the cap next season. Leighton Vander Esch, who is also on the bubble, told us of a message he left for Dan Quinn and the Dallas D. It was a little unexpected for sure, um, but I haven't talked to him yet. I'm kind of—I know he's getting bombarded with a bunch of questions and a bunch of people texting him, so I'm just kind of letting it die down a little bit. And, and I want to hit him up and talk to him personally on the phone a little bit later. Um, but I mean, it's a tough situation for him, and I mean nobody nobody wishes that on anybody. Um, but I mean, the statement he gave to to DQ yesterday and telling us to go get it. And uh, he, he's he's got everybody's backs, regardless of the situation that he's in. Uh, just shows you the character and and the type of person he is. Now Smith joins former Reagan standout Ty Summers with the Packers. While that drama plays out with Deshaun Watson, the Texans are being forced to start rookie Davis Mills at quarterback with Tyrod Taylor still in the men. Mills is coming off his worst performance yet this past weekend in the 40 to nothing shutout in Buffalo, the worst loss in franchise history. In that loss, Mills had his worst game as well, throwing for four interceptions with a quarterback rating of 25.3. How did Mills view his performance last Sunday? I think the biggest thing from last week is just pro emphasizing protecting the football. Um, I thought I might have forced a throw or two that obviously didn't end up well and just being consistent with making smart decisions and putting the team in the best place to win the game is my job and that's what I need to keep uh, focusing on. Now he has to focus on trying to beat the Patriots this Sunday at home at noon. The baseball playoffs, Houston Astros hosting the Chicago White Sox in game one of the best of five of the American League Divisional Series at Minute Maid Park. Strohs got on the board early and often, already up one run in the third. Alex Bregman grounds to third. Jose Atul, they heading on, beats the throw, 2 0 Houston. Next inning, Houston up by three now with two men on for Michael Brantley. He singles to right, and that's a five run lead. Houston goes on to take game one, six to one. It wasn't even close. Not at all. Good luck right. to the Astros in game two. <laughs> All right, Greg, thanks very yeah. much. Greg, we'll be right back. Tomorrow, low to mid 60s to start the day, and then by the afternoon, we're back up right near 90 degrees for a high temperature. That means Lavernia about 90, Elmendorf 91, Timberwood Park 89, and Bernie 88 degrees. Not much changes into the weekend other than the humidity's back by Sunday. Get ready for that. Ooh. Hopefully we get some <laughs> rain next week. Yeah, that does it for tonight, Beat. Don't forget GMSA at 4.30. Have a great night.